Monday night football. The Cowboys at the Los Angeles Chargers. It's Kellen Moore revenge game as his offense actually doing pretty well and the Cowboys defense not doing so well. As bad as that week five disaster was, the Cowboys are still favored, which might surprise you, but not if you've been subscribed to us here on the channel. So again, make sure you guys are subscribed to us here, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. We're going to preview this game again, different angles today. We're going to begin with the coaching matchups. Coaching matters. Mike McCarthy, head coach, offensive mastermind for the Cowboys. Brandon Staley, Chargers head coach, defensive mastermind. Uh, both guys kind of in similar spots. They were experts on one side of the football, and their results on that side of the football haven't been very good. Now, this Chargers defense is bad, as we'll get into. And a common critique of this team and we get to the defense side here too, is that they don't do enough against good or great uh, defenses, that they have struggled in that area. They have not put up the type of results this team needs to have, whatever. And to a certain extent, that stuff is true. Let's look at the games versus good versus great defenses for this Cowboys team, uh, really since Dak came back from the injury, and then what they've done so far this year. They scored 54 points against the Colts. Now, the stat you're about to see here in parenthesis is EPA per play, or, or, or just, sorry, just, just EPA. So it's, it's trying to kind of get rid of the, the, oh, your defense scored a touchdown, right? So that makes them better. Your offense looks worse. It's not just points scored, whatever. It's just overall results, you know, defense only stuff. I know the Colts were 13th. That kind of shocked me, right? You dropped it to four on them. Yeah, 12th ranked Jags defense scored 34. Fourth ranked Eagles offense scored 40. Fifth ranked commanders, I just, commanders were five. That kind of shocked me too, right? They were six. The Bucks last year, they were 11th. You scored 31. So you, you have had success against some good slash great defenses, and you've had bad success against the Niners and against the uh, Washington Commanders. And then this year, with the play calling change, things have not gone your way at this point. Points scored versus good slash or just actual just defenses overall, right? Scored 40 against the Giants. They suck. The Jets, 30. They're not very good. I was actually surprised the Jets were outside the top half. Um, that was my reference point for the previous graphic because that's what we did for defense that we did earlier and we'll get to again. Pages were 13th. I was kind of surprised with that one too. But hey, the numbers are the numbers, right? Cardinals were bad. Niners were good. You laid an egg against them again. And now you have the Chargers. And your Patriots, your defense played really well and got you some more points. Again, that's points scored, EPA, et cetera. So you have to play well against this Chargers bad defense or the confidence meter is going to drop even more for this Cowboys team. So what do you guys think? Is this a must-win game for this Dallas Cowboys defense? Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment on today's show. So go vote if the ad comes here on YouTube. Number two. How about Dan Quinn versus Kellen Moore? It's the Kellen Moore revenge game, right? In theory, both guys are going to know pretty well what the other one is going to try to do, although Kellen Moore has kind of added even more motion into his offense and does not silence the calls coming from into the house theories out there. The Chargers offense this year, seventh in points per game. They're fifth in yards per game. They're fifth in EPA per play. It's the same metric we mentioned earlier, expected points added. Sixth in success rate. Six in red zone scoring. It's top 10 offense, folks. It's a good, it's a really good offense. They are not a good run team, though. Now, Austin Eckler has been out. They played a bad Dolphins run defense in week one, too, though. Chargers since week one. On the ground, they're 31st in rush EPA per play. Dead last in rushing success rate. Averaging 3.37 yards per carry. And it's sub three if you take out the 51-yard kind of trick play to the receiver. They ran from the backfield and tossed it to him. We, we made the point that this offense has been criticized, understandably so, for not having great results against good slash great defenses. Let's flip it now. This Cowboys defense against good, which I would describe as above average, or great offenses. They allowed 31 against the, the Green Bay Packers. They allowed 40 against the Jags. They allowed 34 against Philadelphia, despite some, some takeaways in that game. 
They allowed 19 against the 49ers. They actually played well on that one. They allowed 28 to the Arizona Cardinals. They're, yeah, they're 13th, right? I know. It's a really good scheme over there. And they allowed 42 to the 49ers. And yes, look, offensive mistakes and vice versa all impact that. But if, if we're going to complain about the, the offense not performing against good defenses, don't we have to say the exact same thing about the defense as well? You're playing a great, you're playing a great offense. So defense, show me you are the best defense in the NFL like you claim to be. Because they haven't done it yet. I need to see it. Now, today's show is made possible by Factor Meals. With the busy fall season in swing, I don't have the time that I used to. I got a two-year-old or almost here at home. There's football. I don't have the time to prep and cook and clean and all that stuff the way that I, I used to be able to do. That's why I love Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. They can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. If you're too busy to cook this fall, Factor is perfect for you. Head to factormeals.com slash cowboyschat50 and use code cowboyschat50 to get 50% off. That's code cowboyschat50 at factormeals.com slash cowboyschat50. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Let's talk some players now. Who's got to step up this week? Where the hell is Sam Williams at? Now, I thought this would be a breakout year. He, he done jack this year, man. Got four tackles, a TFL and a sack. He's busy tweeting on social media. He's not going to get more playing time. 9.5% pressure rate. You know what you're not, You ain't playing, Sam? You ain't producing. What's going on here? He's, it's not like he's not getting snaps, you know? He, he is getting playing time out there for this Dallas Cowboys team. Is it a lot? No, certainly not. But, you know, your snaps this year among your defensive ends. Micah Parsons at 239. Tank Lawrence at 154. Dorrance Armstrong's at 106. Sam Williams is at 100. So, he's playing. He's getting 20 snaps a game. Where is he? Show up. With, I assume, Kamani Turpin out. Uh, Rico Dowdle Deuce Vaughn will be your return man. At minimum, I'm terrified of these guys fumbling. Um, we've seen Dowdle bobble some. We've seen Deuce Vaughn bobble some in camp in the preseason. I don't trust that. Don't have a big time special teams gaffe and break my heart. Brandon Cooks. Is this scheme related? Probably. But uh, you, make, you make this big trade for Brandon Cooks. We're all excited about it. Yo, you added some speed. And your usage has, has honestly kind of been criminal. They're not... Cooks does a great job doing, doing in-breaking in stuff, you know? And you're just using them on goes and comebacks pretty much. Like, what are we doing? It doesn't make any sense. Make, make it happen. It, if, if we're going to force feed Michael Gallup targets on slants, can we do it to Cooks like one time? Come on. Who you got winning? D-A-L for the Dallas Cowboys. L-A-C for the Los Angeles Chargers. Vote for me in the comments section, D-A-L or L-A-C. J. Ron Curse is next up here. I, I think everything he said after this past loss was the right thing to say. And that's great. Now you got to show up and do it. I, I, I think Curse is, is like an emotional leader in the soccer room is, is a big part of this team. He's been bad. He, he has to be better. Has to be better. And with Leighton Van Der Esch out, Damone Clark also must step up. That has to happen if you're going to win. Now, the next five guys on our list, the top five players to watch, you're playing a good football team. You want to beat good football teams? Your best players must show up. They did not against San Francisco. So some names. Tony Pollard. Again, your, your ground offense is bad. Scheme change made it worse. It's not great. You can't fumble, though. It's, it is not Mike McCarthy's fault that Tony Pollard gets a, a good run for the first time all game and fumbles the ball and it's recovered. Hold on to the football. Make some plays. The game script was bad for him, I know. Charters are bad. Have success. Tank Lawrence. Now he's a great run defender. He's actually done a really good job of getting pressures. He's, he's been your, I'd say, your second best defense player. Maybe top three with De'Ron Bland with, with, of course, Diggs out. But how many times do we say Tank Lawrence against the 49ers? 
Did we say it one time? Got to be better. Got to be better. So who do you think needs to step up the most this week? Any player. I, I think we'll have agreement on, on the number one name in a little bit. Who do you think it needs to be? Go tell me in the comments section. CD Lamb. Get your best players the ball. Come on, guys. Come on, Mike. Make it happen. Throw him the, throw him the football. You know, he, he's asked, what's the red zone issues? Let me touch that rock. He hasn't touched one yet in the red zone. Hasn't happened. Now, the ball to 20, I think, should count, but still, it doesn't count, and I'm going to use it in, in, in my advantage here. Get, get him the football. Number two, Micah Parsons. Uh, I'm going to let him as an athlete for today, uh, which is kind of what I think he's going to be. I would expect Micah, because of LVE's injury, because you're down multiple players at linebacker, I think you will likely see more Micah Parsons at off-ball linebacker this week. And I think what that probably means is just more snaps overall for this team. You know, Micah has not played 100% of your snaps this year. Played a lot of them, but he might have played 100% of your snaps against the Chargers. And, you know, early downs, off-ball linebacker, obvious pass downs, blitz for sure, still get some defensive end reps in there overall. It's got to be more of a unique hybrid role out of necessity as opposed to just like, hey, go, go get the quarterback. Of course, your quarterback's at number one. He deserves plenty of blame for, as, for this bad offense. It's not all his fault. It's not all your receiver's fault. Not all your line's fault. It's a team effort. It's a team sport. I get it. Got to play well. You got to. And frankly, I'm not even that mad about the interceptions. I'm really not. Game, game was over. That was a bad, bad, terrible throw accuracy-wise on a shot play that like, was never going to work because you had two guys in routes you had a deep go and a comeback route that neither were open. You maxed it and you had max protect and you still got hit. How does that happen? Bad throw. Whatever. Next one, eh, bad scheme design. Game's over. Then Gallup gets undercut because he's just not been playing very well. But you couldn't move the ball on offense at the beginning of the game. And Dak missed throws early in the game. If this is how the offense is going to live, where it's only short shit, you have to be super accurate. He was not against San Francisco. You have to dial that in and do better this week.